<clears throat> Mr. President. The Senator from Illinois. Mr. President, I would say to the uh, Republican leader while still on floor, would you entertain a question? I'm sorry that he did not stay for a question because I would have asked the basic question raised by Senator Schumer. Does he really believe that there is no evidence of voter suppression in the actions of 19 states across our nation? I think the facts speak for themselves. For those who are witnessing this, this is a rare moment in the history of this chamber. In the recent history, it's rare because we're here. Half of the seats are occupied in the United States Senate. That is a rare occurrence because it is rare that we come together to debate, to amend, or to even exercise the authority given to us as United States Senators. It is also a rare moment in history because we again are being called on, as others have before us, to speak to the fundamentals of freedom and democracy and to go on record by the end of this day when night falls as to where we stand in the sweep of history. Mr. President, approximately 155 million Americans voted in the 2020 election, highest voter turnout percentage since the 1900 election. A record number voted early or cast mail-in ballots, options that were expanded in red and blue states in response to the deadly pandemic. That was before we had vaccines and COVID was killing an average of 1,200 Americans a day and yet they voted. Tens of millions of Americans stood in line, some for hours to cast their ballots. That's how important the American people thought it was to vote in 2020. People risked their lives to cast their ballots. It's hard to believe that fact can be measured against statements made by the Republican leader just a few moments ago that people don't care about the right to vote. They care enough to risk their lives, and they did in the 2020 election. Despite the crush of voters and the confusion of the pandemic, the 2020 election was judged the most secure in American history. That's not my opinion. That's the official statement issued by the Department of Homeland Security under the Trump administration, an, administ an agency which coordinates the nation's top security and voting infrastructure expertise. They released their assessment 10 days after the 2020 election. And they did so to counter a dangerous and unprecedented avalanche of misinformation, including from an enraged and defeated president claiming falsely the election had been stolen. These nonpartisan election security experts were not alone in rejecting Donald Trump's big lie. President Trump and his loyalists filed more than 60 lawsuits in state and federal courts, repeating their false claims of voter fraud and stolen votes. They offered no evidence to back their claims, only bizarre conspiracy theories and far-right internet gossip. Their lawsuits were overwhelmingly dismissed, some by judges whom President Trump himself had nominated. The former president exerted extraordinary pressure on the Department of Justice. We found that in the Senate Judiciary Committee and through other sources, and he failed. When he couldn't bully the courts or Justice Department to do his bidding, he summoned his mob. We all know personally about the death and destruction the big, black, big lie brought to this building on January 6th, a year ago. We lived through it, the Capitol survived it, and the entire world recoiled at the sight of Americans, goaded by the former president attacking the heart of our democracy. The big lie is corroding America's faith in our, in our elections. In a recent poll, two-thirds of Republicans, two-thirds of Republicans surveyed, agreed with the false claim that, quote, voter fraud helped Joe Biden win the 2020 election. Two-thirds of Republicans. That poll also found 64% of Americans believing U.S. democracy is, quote, in crisis and at the risk of failing. Senator McConnell dismisses this conversation, but the American people know it's deadly serious. In another poll, one in three Republicans said they trust that the 2024 elections will be fair regardless of who wins. Only one in three Republicans. 
Donald Trump would rather destroy American democracy than admit he lost the election. And sadly, it seems that many Republican lawmakers would rather repeat his lies than face his wrath. Republican lawmakers in many states are using the big lie as a pretext to pass new laws aimed at undermining both, both Americans' right to vote and the integrity of our elections. Sadly, Republicans in the Senate are aiding and abetting this attack. Three times last year, the Republicans used the filibuster, the weapon of choice in the Jim Crow era, to block this Senate from even debating voting rights. Mr. President, each morning we stand and pledge allegiance to that flag and what it represents. But I don't believe any senator stands to pledge allegiance to the filibuster. The filibuster is a rules creation in the Senate which really has stopped many important pieces of legislation from being considered. It was really the major reason in the 1960s that the Voting Rights Act and other civil rights legislation took so long. I know personally, five times I have brought to the floor the DREAM Act to give young people in this country a chance for a path to citizenship, and five times on the floor of the Senate it's been stopped by that same filibuster. We've heard lofty rhetoric from the Republican leader about what the filibuster means in the Senate. It has been used, perhaps, in constructive ways, but it's certainly been used time and again for a destructive purpose. In the year since January 6, Republican legislatures in nearly 20 states have enacted laws making it harder for Americans to vote, and in some cases easier for partisan actors to potentially meddle and interfere with elections. In total, more than 440 bills with voting restrictions have been introduced in 49 states, and Senator McConnell can't see one example of voter suppression. Let me give you some examples so you know what we're speaking of. We've heard this from Senators Warnock and Ossoff about the state of Georgia, a new law making it a crime to give a voter waiting in line to vote a snack or a drink of water. A crime to give a drink of water to someone waiting in line. And as Senator Booker reminded us yesterday, these long lines many times are populated by minority populations. What a coincidence that they are the ones with too few voting machines or polling places and have to wait many times hours to exercise their franchise. In Texas, as a result of a new law known as SB1, local election officials all over the state are reporting they're being forced to reject hundreds of absentee ballot requests for the state's upcoming March primary. In Denton County, Texas officials have had to reject over 40% of absentee ballot requests. In Travis County, nearly a third of mail ballot applications have been rejected. Making matters worse, this new Texas law ties officials' hands by making it a felony, a felony for an election official in Texas to send an unsolicited mail ballot application to a voter. And in Florida, Republican Governor DeSantis last week proposed creating a police unit that would be empowered to arrest voters and others who allegedly violate the state's election laws. This is straight out of the Jim Crow playbook. In addition, Republican lawmakers in at least 10 states have diminished secretaries of state's authorities over elections or shifted aspects of election administration to partisan bodies, including state legislators themselves or election boards dominated by the Republican Party. A new law in Arkansas now grants the State Board of Election Commissioners, made up of five Republicans and one Democrat, police powers to investigate complaints about violation of the state's election laws, despite no evidence, none, of voter fraud in the state and empowers the board to upend the state's traditional county-based election administration. A new law in Arizona specifies the Democratic Secretary of State, Katie Hobbs, can no longer represent the state in lawsuits defending the election code. That power now lies with the Attorney General, who happens to be Republican, but only through January 2nd, 2023, when Katie Hobbs' term in office ends. Even more chilling, Republican lawmakers in a number of states have introduced or passed new laws criminalizing aspects of election administration. In Wisconsin, the election administrators could face criminal penalties for correcting mistakes on a voter's mail-in ballot. Voting rights experts fear that such laws would leave 
could leave nonpartisan election administrators and workers forever looking over their shoulder or cause them to quit or be replaced by those who are less experienced and more partisan. So why is this happening? As I mentioned earlier, the 2020 election had incredible turnout. According to the Census Bureau, 67 percent of all eligible Americans reported voting and the majority clearly voted for President Joe Biden. So now Republican lawmakers are using the big lie to pass partisan election laws in order to reduce voter turnout and control outcomes of the elections this year and in 2024. Their target, Democratic voters. And their goal, sow the seeds of doubt in our democracy and the credibility of future elections. Republicans refuse to join us in protecting voting rights. Why? Because the agenda they are following was set by Donald Trump. And dissenters pay a price. If you don't endorse, if you endorse rather, the big lie, he'll endorse you. If you don't, he'll unleash his fury. These attacks on voting rights are shaking the pillars of our democracy, the credibility of our elections, and the peaceful transfer of power. The vast majority of our Republican colleagues are all singing from the same hymnal. They say there's no wave, no new wave of voter suppression and election nullification. They're wrong. They claim that our proposals to restore the Voting Rights Act and set minimum federal standards for elections amount to an unprecedented takeover of state elections and a par partisan power grab. They are wrong. Each of us in our desks has this, this common document that guides us, I hope, in all of our actions on the Senate floor. Despite statements to the contrary, we know that this document is explicit in what we are setting out to do today. The Elections Clause of the Constitution, Article 1, Section 4, gives Congress the authority to make election laws. The 14th and 15th Amendment give Congress the responsibility to protect voting by appropriate legislation. The Voting Rights Act was reauthorized and strengthened five times, always with a strong bipartisan majority. The last time it was reauthorized was 2006, seven years before Shelby County. And that decision in the Supreme Court we know gutted the law's protection. The Senate voted then unanimously Democrats and Republicans to reauthorize and strengthen the law. 16 current Republican members of the Senate voted yes. It wasn't a federal takeover elections then. It isn't now, and they know it. I'm the post person chosen by Senate Democrats to count votes. And based on their public statements, two Democrats may not vote to change the rules to allow this Congress to stop this power grab. These senators have given their reasons. There's something more important than an existing Senate rule, a rule that has been changed 160 times in the history of this body. The integrity of our free elections, the right to have your vote counted, and our oath to uphold the def and defend the Constitution, I believe, count for more. On January 6th, after the insurrection was quelled, we returned to the Senate to complete our constitutional duty, certifying the election and declaring Joe Biden president. Speaking to the few members of his party who still intended to challenge the electoral count on the feeble grounds that some of their constituents had doubts about the election, the junior senator from Utah, Senator Romney, said, and I quote, the best way you can show respect for the voters who were upset about this is to tell them the truth. And then something happened on the floor of the Senate which rarely occurs. Senators on both sides of the aisle rose to their feet and gave Senator Romney a standing ovation. Do you remember it? I do. It's time to remember that courage. It's time to tell the voters the truth. Stop repeating the big lie that's tearing this country apart. It's time for the Senate to pass the Voting Rights Act and the, and the Freedom to Vote Act. To restore the power of the Voting Rights Act is to restore the promise of America. I'd like to close by reminding us that earlier this week we marked Martin Luther King Jr. Day. I saw many tweets from members of this chamber celebrating his legacy. One Republican leader tweeted, and I quote, nearly 60 years since the March on Washington, Dr. Martin Luther King's message echoes as powerfully as it did that day. His legacy inspires us to celebrate and keep building upon the remarkable progress our great nation has made toward becoming a more perfect union. Well, I certainly have good news for that Republican leader 
who sent that tweet. He has an opportunity today to keep that building on that remarkable progress. Instead of building on Dr. King's work, we have watched Republicans in state legislatures across the country choose to tear down that remarkable progress and make it harder to vote, making it harder to even acknowledge and teach the brutal history of the civil rights movement and the systemic in in inequities that still exist. So here are the questions for members in this chamber today. Are we going to live up today, this day, Wednesday, to the values we claimed on Monday, Martin Luther King Day? Are we going to be inspired to actually listen to the message of Dr. King and why he risked his life to deliver it? Are you going to keep building upon the legacy and progress that he fought to achieve? For all of us on both sides of the aisle who quoted Dr. King on Monday, I implore you to listen to what he said in an interview in 1963 when asked about President Kennedy's civil rights bill. He said, I think the tragedy is that we have a Congress with a Senate that has a minority of misguided senators who will use the filibuster to keep the majority of people from even voting. They won't let the majority senators vote, and certainly they wouldn't want the majority of people to vote because they know they do not represent the majority of the American people. In fact, they represent in their own states a very small minority. Let's listen to Dr. King. Let's stop using the filibuster to kill legislation to protect America's fundamental right to participate in our democracy. Mr. President, I yield the floor.